Y'all, this little camera is so freaking dope. Believe the hype. But you've probably been wondering, when I drop my footage onto my computer, what are these freaking LRF files? I'm here to help you. Hey everyone, it's me, Halise, endeavoring to persevere. As always, if you're new here, I make videos about my chaotic good life. Subscribe, follow social media, all of the things. Quick, quick video today. If you are on the internet in any sort of capacity for this year, then there is no way you have not seen this camera. <laughs> any content creator out here has been talking about this thing so much. It is the Osmo Pocket 3. And this thing is so dope. If you can spring for the creator combo, which of course I did because I am here on the internet, <laughs> believe the hype is the point of the story, but that's not what this video is about. I wanted to talk about something that I haven't really seen anyone talk about with this camera, and that's the proxy workflow. I had to really search the sphere of the realm of the internet. Let's get into it. In this video, I'm gonna briefly explain what proxies are, and then I'm also gonna show you, we're gonna hop over to my computer and I'm gonna show you how I use the proxies to edit in Adobe Premiere Pro. So when you're filming with your Osmo Pocket 3 and you go to drop your footage, you've probably noticed these .lrf files along mixed in with your .mp4 files and if you separate your audio, your video files. In past versions of the Osmo, I believe you could actually toggle these off, but with this model, they're just built in. You, As far as I could tell, you can't turn off the proxies. Um, so you're always gonna have those LRF files with anything you shoot, especially if it's in 4K or 3K vertical. A proxy is essentially a low resolution version of your video file that you can then work from, edit as if you would your high resolution full res file, and then when you're ready, link the two back together and export at full res. This is great for someone like me who's a filmmaker and content creator because I film a lot of content and usually I'm filming everything in at least 4K. So I actually work from proxies quite a bit and it's a way to not bog down your computer system. So that way your computer isn't always having to process the full resolution version of everything you film. It can actually just work from the proxies and then not touch the full resolution until it's time to export. Another way that I often will use proxies is if I'm working with an editor. I'll actually send the editor the proxies because they're a lot smaller, the file sizes are way more manageable, and they actually will edit a whole video for me using the proxies first. And then when I get the project back in Premiere Pro, I will online it to the full resolution 4K version finalize it and then export it. So now let's head over to my laptop where I'm gonna show you how you can turn your .lrf files into .mp4 files and link them in Adobe Premiere Pro. Let's do it. Okay, welcome to my incredibly messy desk. Sorry, but that's the life I'm living. All right, so real quick, I'm gonna show you how I rename all of the proxies so that way they become videos and then I can now use them in Adobe Premiere Pro if I so choose. Step one, go to where you have put your proxies in your computer. So for me, I often separate my proxies. I will do the LRF files in their own folder and then the actual high resolution version of the videos I'm working from in their own folder as well. So after I highlight all of them, I right click and go to rename. That'll bring up a new window because you'll probably have quite a few things selected. <laughs> so the first thing you wanna make sure is that add text is highlighted. And then you're gonna type in .mp4 as the text you want added. And then you're gonna change it to be after name. So that way it's showing up to be .lrf.mp4. And then you're gonna hit rename. Now when you do that, a new window should appear that also asks like, are you sure in so few words? And the answer is yes, you're very sure. The other thing I will say is to make sure you check that box that says apply to all. So that way you're not sitting there hitting yes for like a hundred million gazillion shots because if you're like me, you're using your Osmo Pocket 3 a lot and you're filming on it a lot. So you probably have chingles of shots. So once you do that though, you will literally watch your files turn into videos. They, they just turn into videos on the spot like that, which is amazing. Cause then now you can hop into your editor and work with those proxies. So I'm gonna show you how I incorporate the proxies into my Premiere Pro workflow. Obviously there's other ways you can do this. There's other editing software. I edit everything I do in Premiere Pro though. 
So in my project, the way I have it set up is that I actually put the high resolution versions of the videos in my project, and then I attach my proxies to them. So that way, in essence, I can turn my proxies on and off as I'm editing. I'm not sure about other editing softwares, but this is how Premiere Pro does it, and I really like doing it this way. So once you have your high resolution versions inside your Premiere Pro project, you're going to highlight all of them, right click, and then go to proxy, and then go to attach proxies. You'll also notice that, say, if you have a camera that doesn't create its own proxies, um, you can also create proxies using Adobe Premiere Pro as well. Again, the whole point of a proxy is to help not bog down your system that you're editing on. So we already have proxies made, so we just need to attach them to our high resolution footage. We're gonna go to attach proxies. That brings up a new window. The main thing to know about this, in the match file properties down below, you wanna make sure that everything is unchecked except media start. This is important because in general, if you're working on a camera that creates its own proxies, the name is gonna be slightly different to let you know that it is a proxy. It is a low resolution version of the main thing you shot. So for the FX3, for example, it'll be the name and it'll do like SO3 at the end. With these, remember these are technically .LRFs, .MP4. So the name is slightly different. So you wanna do media start so that way it's matching the time code in each shot and that's how it knows which one's the proxy version and which one's the full res. Then you wanna relink others automatically so that way you're not having to do it every single time for every single shot because again, you're probably using your Pocket 3 a lot so you probably have chingos of shots because I know I do. And then you're going to hit attach. If you wanna use media browser, great, but it's kind of honestly whatever you want. And you're gonna watch as Premiere automatically figures out which proxies are the right ones for the full res and attaches them all for you. Bada bing, bada boom, you're ready to go. Now, as you're editing, you can easily toggle on and off your proxies. That's it. Now you're not weighing your system down with working from the high resolution videos all the time. So with the Pocket 3, the proxies it creates are 1280 by 720 proxies. So pretty small videos, and it should really help if your system is really getting bogged down with working in 4K. When I'm editing with my workflow, I leave it on proxies until I'm doing just like the final, final pass through watch. And I'm starting to do my color correction and my color grading and I wanna make sure what I'm seeing is really what it's fitting to be when I export. So yeah, that was it. This is a super quick video. I hope this helps. Um, if you want me to do more Pocket 3 content, let me know in the comments below. I feel like everyone who talks about cameras has talked about the Pocket 3, maybe at nauseum. So that's why I haven't created content around it. I don't wanna be like annoying y'all, but it is a super dope camera. I really believe the hype, like 100% believe the hype. I love it. In the comments below, let me know if you have any questions, if you struggles, I will try to answer them at my earliest convenience. Again, I'm Halise, endeavoring to persevere. As always, big shout out to my Patreon producers, patreon.com slash Halise. There you get early access to my videos, exclusive content, merch, and more. If you enjoyed this video, consider buying me a coffee. I really appreciate it. And yeah, I'll see you when I see you.